Hello, everybody. My name is Troy Nelson. We are live on KEXP here in the KEXP live room. And we are here, independent, 90.3 FM, KEXP, broadcasting live in Seattle and streaming 24-7 at KEXP.org and our free mobile apps. And KEXP, as you know, is a nonprofit, and these live performances are made possible by donations from people like you. And I am so happy today because I am joined here in the KEXP live room with Tommy Stinson's Cowboys in the Campfire. And how are you two doing today? Yippee. Yes, yippee. Yes, well, just it, yippee. Yippee. I'm feeling pretty yippee too, so if we're ready to do this, let's take it away. All right. When I had a dream You moment I had a dream Mind plays tricks on me. Been a while since you be beast your spell. I had a dream. You were in it. I had a dream. You know I didn't hear your voice. I had a dream that you know would have been my first choice. It don't take much to coax these ghosts from the box. Oh, Pandora has the right idea, but it keeps my big thieves locked. Screwed up friends 
And you never get to kick me to the curb again Troubles playing out in a brand new light. The thing will be much easier the way I've got. At least we found out now, and you're the reason why. Well, I hope you're Mr. Next to be Mr. Right. Awesome. You're listening to Tommy Stinson's Cowboys in the Campfire live on KEXP. Fall apart together, baby. Shoot, you know how we do. Well, stupid ain't a stupid. Stupid ain't shit kind. Sanity won't know you in this life Broken hearts for the start of fire Cause we fall apart together for last time And got too many reasons Reasons you would turn us upside down Looking for the app, show us where we're found. We've all apart together for last time. Seems to me we don't see eye to eye for now. Seems to me we're dancing cheek to cheek. one, but it's a story nonetheless. Smile 
cig Children hanging from his mouth Just like words you can't spit out Staring through the trees Where a garden used to be All the weeds have been a growing Where seeds ain't been sown So many years Don't you wonder how he feels Sometimes I wonder what it feels to be A man who dumped his girlfriend or her daughter But drank herself to death fade you know what else is gonna do it for you you're you're a professional <laughs> you sometimes are... we get faded sometimes we just fade <laughs> <laughs> write that quote down please you are listening to tommy stinson's cowboys in the campfire uh what a pleasure to have you both here in the kexp studios today and uh, once again thank you so much for taking the time yeah thank you so much yes you and chip roberts i'm so curious of so many things uh, one of them was this coordination bet for the uh, olive colored guitars uh, on was this planned or did you both show up with these same colored guitars kind of showed up <laughs> just showed up that way <laughs> well it started somewhere and it ended somewhere else and well, we still have yet to write that chapter. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it looks great. I was Thank like, you. all right. Um, also, I'm very curious because this Cowboys and the Campfire project and this album has been a long time in the making. And what can you tell us about you and Chip Roberts' history and the beginnings of this project? So, yeah. So he and I have been writing together for about 15 years now. And, and um, you know, we wrote some stuff that ended up on um, a record I had uh, done called um, One Man Mutiny. Um, did that, wrote some songs on that, and some stuff. He, we actually wrote some of the tracks off that last Bash and Pop record I did called um, Anything Could Happen. In fact, the title track he helped me write. And, uh, you know, after goofing around for, you know, 15 years, we just decided to make our own record and call it something. 
Chip came up with these uh, little watercolor paintings that he did for us, uh, did for me anyway, for Christmas one year. And I was like, ah, oh, that's cool. Let's call it that. And we went with that. And both of our lives, you know, running in different directions for so many years, it just seemed like it just had to, you know, it had to let itself be revealed when it was ready. Yeah. And it took that long. You didn't force anything. No, no. I was just telling one of your um, associates here, it's like, yeah, you can't force anything, can't be like anyone. Do it as you do, and it's ready when it's ready. <laughs> Love that. And so you were in Austin, Texas, and John Doe of X just happened to be there, and he ha just happened to recently move there yeah. to Austin, Texas, and you got together, and all of a sudden he ends up on the album. What can you tell us about John Doe's role on this <laughs> that, record? That, that, that whole story was kind of the perfect storm of a lot of things happening at once. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you hit it on the head. So John Doe was moving to Austin. We were coming through Austin. A friend of mine who I'd played with before, um, Christina Smith, uh, was working at a studio down there and producing and stuff. So we just, you know, all the things lined up in a particular way and said, hey, can we come by the studio and do these some songs? And John was like, yeah, I can come play bass and do some background vocals. And we just had fun with it. And the first five songs of the record um, came from that, that session. Um, Fall Apart Together, uh, Karma's Bitch, um, uh, um, hey man, and um, a couple of them I'm blanking on. It doesn't matter at the point at the moment. The point was that we all ended up in the same room together doing that, and it was a lot of fun. And it took us a bit while to kind of, you know, finish up doing some stuff because I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to make an Americana record. I didn't want to make this record or that record. I want to make sure the songs were the songs, you know, doing their own thing in their own right before, you know, putting them on record. Yeah. So we did that, and and um, it worked out great. And you know, John played upright bass, which he had never played on anyone's record before. So that was extra fun. And we've oh, got great fun. video video footage of, of him having a hoot and a holler with it, which was great. And he's, you know, he's been a dear friend of mine for many moons. Yeah, you've, I mean, so. you've had similar lives, similar pasts, and I, it, it yeah. makes perfect sense that your your lives have come together over the years. So. Yeah, we, you know, we always cross paths and, you know. Yeah. The occasional text here and there. Yeah. What are you doing? How are you doing? Well, I'd What's like to bring on? up another friend and uh, collaborator and uh, that I was uh, also curious about. Peter Jesperson uh, has, that guy. has a book coming out, and you are also touring for this book as well. What can you tell us about this book? So what happened um, with all that, how that came to fruition, is that Peter's book coming is coming out, um, Before I Recall, is what it's called, I believe, and... We were going to be in the West Coast doing some stuff at the same time they were trying to promote his book. And I was like, well, if it works out, we can do the same, do it together. And you want me to talk about the book and be, because I'm in, I'm in the book, you know, and all that stuff. Um, we do it wherever it works out. And so Seattle, Portland work out. Um, there's going to be one in the East Coast in Providence. It's going to work out in December. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a, like a book tour with him on the East Coast, you know, doing New York, Philly, and... Um, yeah, some other things to kind of help out, but because I'm also in the book, mm -hmm. it just kind of worked out that way. Mm -hmm. Love yep. that. Mm -hmm. yep. um, we both have something in common. We have a few friends in common, obviously. Uh, Mr. Cole, who is Kevin out of town Cole, at the moment. Who was, was lucky enough to escape this one. <laughs> <laughs> he just ran to Iceland. <laughs> He's like, I'm not doing this one. I'm going to Iceland. He's like, I've talked to Tommy so many times. No, that guy. no yeah, he, he definitely exactly. wanted me to send his love. But also we have something else in common. Um, I, all, I play in a band that Duff McKagan used to be in, and so did you. And I want to know what your time was like being sort of on retainer for Guns N' Roses. Retainer? I was never on retainer. <laughs> we were either playing or we were off retainer. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, it was, it was a great gig on for call? me. On call? Should I say on yeah, call? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, no, that was, I mean, I, I'll just tell you, it was a great gig for me. I have nothing bad to say about it, although everyone wants to hear the sordid tales, but there are more good tales than sordid ones, and every band has sordid tales, so it doesn't really matter to me. But, sure. But um, the, the great thing was when I first met Duff was um, we were in Guns N' Roses' rehearsals, and, he, and um, we, we had a guy that, was, that um, was working for us that n used to work for Duff back when he was in Guns N' Roses, and he was playing... He was playing um, Duff's new record, and I think it was called, it was when he did Loaded, that first record. He's yep. playing in the studio, and I walked in, I go, hey, man, what's that? That's cool, you know, I like it. And he said, that's Duff's new record. And I'm like, you're kidding. And it's like, wow, that sounds great. And I love that record. So come to, 
hey, Duff's in town. You guys want to meet up and go have? So we went and had coffee at <laughs> Starbucks, no doubt. <laughs> Funny enough, um, uh, and you know we had a great, great visit, a great hang, and um, we stay in touch. I mean, I stay in touch with all those guys, but um, you know he's he's been a good he's been a good pal to me. Yeah. Um, through a lot of things, so that's great. Yeah, yeah, he was here in the KEXP studios. I sat down with him in here just a, a few years ago, and he's always just so thoughtful and sweet, and he's uh, a great, a hu sweet great human. That fella. Yeah, a gentleman yes. and a scholar. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> so, also, and lastly, uh, Tommy, I wanted to ask you about your feelings and thoughts, and I'm sure you've been asked this quite a bit in the last uh, couple of months. But here it comes. Uh, here it comes. I know. I'm so curious. Oh, Tell me about the the remix of the replacements, Tim, because I, I've heard a lot of purists being like, it's, uh, "The way that it is is fine." That's what we grew up listening to. I personally listened to the remix, and I'm like, "This is a very interesting and kind of awesome experience." Uh, that was me. I'm curious what your experience was hearing the remix of Tim. So it, it has it has a few layers to it, um, emotionally speaking. That record, um, and as, as well as Don't Tell a Soul, I always thought sounded terrible. Mm -hmm. um, my, my two cents on it was, but you know, and Tim particularly when it came out, I remember just thinking, Man, you know, a lot, a lot of my records sound good on my stereo. This one just does not. And, I've, and so it always kind of stuck with me. And, you know, I never thought of why or whatever. It's just I know that in looking back on it, the record company wanted it to sound a certain way to try and get us on the radio and things like that. And I think Tommy Early tried to make that happen. But he wasn't a mixer. So we lost Ed Stasium due to... Um, you know, conflicting schedules and stuff like that, which was the unfortunate part. But li listening back, you know, listening to the new version of it and stuff like that, um, I'm glad. It, I'm glad it was re remixed. I wouldn't do that to any of the other records. I think that right. one. I think that one. Like I said, uh, don't tell us so. Uh, were mixed a certain way for the wrong reasons, and and it shows. And so, you know, I think the new the remix of it sounds great. I think you get a, uh, you get a better picture of like what it should have sounded like would have sounded like had we had a proper mix. So um, I back it. I, I think it sounds great. I, I uh, love that uh, insight, actually, Tommy. Thank you. Because yeah, you don't want to touch any of the other records. I could see why you felt that way about Tim, but like yeah. you wouldn't want to touch Sorry, Mom. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally. I wouldn't normally even consider it at all, right. except for like I said, both those records. I just thought they sounded a particular way because the wrong things were going into trying to make them sound like something that they weren't, and let's make them sound like they kind of should have. Sounded, and I think you know Matt Wallace did the same thing with um, remixing "Don't Tell a Soul." I mean, we had these radio <laughs> mixer guys do the original versions, and it just seemed like, what? Who? What is this? And it didn't get enough airplay anyway. So what? What do we bother with all that crap for? Yeah. And then you get Matt Wallace, you know, mixing the record he actually made. You go, oh, that's what it. You know, would it would have been great if it just came out like that. We would have <laughs> got the same. You know, same for it anyway. But, yeah. um, you know, when you look back, you can always have some sort of a, you know, thought on that. Yeah. Well, what an amazing history, and I love that you are still making fantastic music. And once well, again, you. we appreciate you. Uh, obviously, the door is always open, so we love having you here. So thank, thank you, you again. Thanks for, thanks for supporting. A hundred percent. Thanks for supporting public radio all. Yes. Dang. Yeah, well, if they didn't, we wouldn't be able to do this. If so. we, I wouldn't be here if there wasn't public radio. Yep, this whole place radio wouldn't be here. Things like that. Awesome. So I'm always grateful. Awesome, and we're grateful for you. Once again, you've been listening to Tommy Stinson's Cowboys in the Campfire right here in the KEXP studios, live on KEXP. Whee! <laughs> awesome. Thank you all. Discover great music at kexp.org.